Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together for our morning time of devotion on this beautiful Tuesday morning. And as we have experienced quite a bunch of storms in the area, please keep those in prayer, especially amongst uh, our brothers and sisters here at Bethany who experienced some damage last night. Uh, definitely keep them in your prayers. And as we come today unto the Lord to uh, receive a little message of hope, encouragement, and mercy, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for you are our God and we are your people. And to God, as we walk uh, these uh, paths that you've laid before us, Dear God, we know that there will be valleys among the mountains, but we also know that even though we walk in the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for thou art with us. And dear God, this is our true comfort and peace. Dear God, may we never forget that no matter how dark things might seem, you are present with us, and you will not only carry us through uh, difficulties, but you will bring us <coughs> into the glory of of the heavens, that all the things in this life which keep us from enjoying your peace will no longer have any effect on us, and we will rest in the blessings of your holiness and righteousness forever and ever. To God, may this be the hope of our heart and the meditation of our soul. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, this morning we turn in our uh, uh, reading from Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening to Leviticus 19, 16, 17. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. You shall not reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. Slander, it must be said, emits a threefold poison, for it injures the teller, the hearer, and the person who is being slandered. Whether the report is true or or false. We are, by this precept of God's word, forbidden to spread it. The reputations of the Lord's people should be very precious in our sight, and we should regard it as shameful to help the devil dishonor the church and the name of the Lord. Some tongues need a bridle rather than a spur. Many rejoice in putting down their brothers and sisters as if in doing so they raise themselves. Noah's wise sons cast a covering over their father. Yet the one who exposed him earned a fearful curse. We may ourselves, one of these dark days, need the leniency and silence of our family. Let us offer it cheerfully to those who require it now. Let this be our family motto and our personal bond. Speak evil of no man. The Holy Spirit, however, permits us to censure sin and prescribe the way in which we are to do it. It must be done by rebuking our brother to his face, not by talking behind his back. This approach, it must be said, is not only manly, but it is brotherly in kindness, Christ-like in love. And we know that under God's blessing, it will be useful, for the word of God never returns in vain. Do we shy away from it? Then we must lay the greater stress upon our conscience and commit ourselves to the responsibility. In case which is spoken by tolerating sin in a friend, we become, it must be said, partakers of it. Hundreds have been saved from gross sins by the timely, wise, affectionate warnings of faithful friends and family. Our Lord Jesus has set us a gracious example of how to deal with erring friends in his warnings given to Peter. The prayer with which he preceded it and the gentle way in which he endured Peter's boastful denial that he needed such a caution. Now, 
whenever we talk about slander or libel or any kind of false dealing with the reputation of someone we know, then, as Spurgeon says, we're not just hurting that person. We're also hurting ourselves and the person that we're speaking to. I think this is a wise thing for us to remember, because it's not just with slander that sin operates in this way. Adultery not only harms the two individuals engaged in it, but also the spouses of those two individuals, and then their wider families and even the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it's important for us to remember the way in which sin has, again, this kind of a cascading effect. And that's why, dear believer, we must flee from sin. And again, while Spurgeon is focused particularly on slander this morning, again, this teaching can be applied to most everything. But let's think for a moment again about what Spurgeon has said about the way we are to deal with an erring brother. It is not for us to spread gossip in these things. But as Spurgeon says, we are to go to the face of the individual. We are to go to them in person as Matthew 18 lays it out. For that is the way to win a brother. You will never lead a brother away from sin by mocking, deriding, and publicly shaming. But you will do so if you show concern and love for them, and a love which is grounded in the forgiveness of sin in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's turn now to the <laughs> evening reading, excuse me, from Exodus 35, 8. Much use was made of this anointing oil under the law, and that which it represents is of primary importance under the gospel. The Holy Spirit, who anoints us for all holy service, is indispensable to us if we would serve the Lord acceptably. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, our religious services are just an empty show. And our inward experience is either a man-made thing or a dead thing. Whenever our ministry is without the unction of the Spirit, what miserable stuff, we must confess, it becomes. And the prayers, praises, meditations, and efforts of private Christians are no better. A holy anointing is this to the soul, and the life of godly devotion a great and wonderful mercy. And we must also confess that its absence is the most serious of all calamities. To go before the Lord without anointing would be like a common Levite thrusting himself into the priest's role. His religious services would be sins, not sacrifices. May we never embark upon holy tasks without sacred anointings and without the presence of the Holy Spirit. We see once more that these blessings fall upon us from our glorious head, from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's from his anointing that we have this blessing. It is from his anointing we who are but the skirts of his garments receive a generous unction. Choice spices were mixed with great skill and care to form the anointing oil, to let us see how rich are all the influences of the Holy Spirit. All good things are found in the divine comforter. Matchless consolation, infallible instruction, immortal quickening, spiritual energy, and divine sanctification are all mixed with the other excellencies and the heavenly anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is why our Lord spoke to his, his disciples, telling them that it was better that if he went away. Not only was it because he was going to the cross and dying for their sins and we raised on the third day, but in his going away they would receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We see it imparts a delightful fragrance to the character and person of the one to whom it is poured. Nothing like it can be found in all the treasures of the wealthy or the secrets of the wise. It is not to be imitated. It only comes from God, and it is freely given through Jesus Christ to every waiting soul. Let us seek it, for we may have it, even this very evening. O oh Lord, 
We pray this night, anoint your servants. Amen. Here in the evening reading, Spurgeon uh, speaks to us in, in such a wonderful way about the blessing of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes in the Christian life, we can forget about the Holy Spirit. And I don't mean that we forget that he exists, but we can forget that he is a, a part of the triune God. That he's not a messenger of Christ, he's not an emanation from the Father, but he is his own person within uh, the Trinity. And the Holy Spirit has such power to give unto us, and we cannot ever forsake his wonderful gift It's one of the things that we need to be praying for when we lift up our uh, desires unto the Lord, that we would have a full anointing of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes, again, as Presbyterians, we uh, get kind of um, weirded out talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. But we need to spend more time thinking about the Holy Spirit, praying unto the Spirit, seeking the full blessing of the Spirit, knowing that it is through the inward work of the Spirit that we are sanctified, that we are reminded of the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we are blessed, and we are being made ready for our attendance at the wedding feast of the Lamb. And so, brothers and sisters, as you rejoice in the Lord today, and as you walk in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, give thanks to the Lord for the Holy Spirit Give thanks for the blessings that we receive from him. And may you again know his goodness and his love. May the Lord bless you today. May the Lord keep you. and May his face shine upon you and be blessed unto your soul. Take care and God bless.